Okay, so I explained a, uh, something wrong last week. Oh, okay, it's at the very top line of Chavbez Amad Aleph. So on 22A1, we were talking about a problem when Dayanim were, were sitting down together to testify, and then someone came and testified against one of the Dayanim. So we said if they'd already uh, uh, written the certification statement, then they can't sign. Because one of the Dayanim who was there when we were about to do it became puzzled. So the question was, how do they become puzzled? So in the top line on Chafei Zamralf, he said, If it's about a problem with his lineage, then it's just a, it's a revelation, meaning... It was it was eventually going to come out anyway, so that that was one part that I explained wrong. But in this line, I explained a couple things wrong. So I said, let's say that uh, uh, that he was a Cohen, and they came out and said that his mother was uh, divorced, so he wasn't a kosher Cohen; he was a chal. So that doesn't affect uh, someone's ability to be a judge, even though there is there is a strange it's a little bit of a strange halacha in Hilchos Kriyas Torah. So we pass well. Ideally, it seems in the time of the Gemara, the person who got the Aliyah read the Torah also. But because people aren't uh, such experts anymore, we um, we have one person laying for everyone. So the post game mentioned some type of thing that just like Hashem, the Torah was given over with Sirsor. Now, in modern Hebrew, that means through an agent. We have our Kriyas Torah that way also, meaning Hashem spoke it to Moshe, and Moshe taught it to the Bnei Israel. So, too, when we have our uh, Kriyas Torah, the person who gets the Aliyah, and then there's the Balkore who's reading it, and everyone hears it. So it's not a din, because we know originally there was no... Uh, um, Balkor. So, some posts can bring down that something about well, it was given over through someone who had yichus like Moshe, so you sh you shouldn't have a mamzer. Uh, let's say Lane, but the, there would be no halachic reason why he couldn't. Be, uh, and they t they talk about edus, like for example, like uh, we don't give a father and a son Aliyahs back to back. So it's something to do with, you know, they, they well, some say it's like an Ayan Hara type thing. But some say it's, it has to do with the fact that they wouldn't be qualified to give, uh, permitted to give testimony together. So they, so being up there is kind of, I don't, know, I don't know, teaching Torah, which is some type of testimony. I mean, we do have the word edus in regard to Torah. So the, the the words of Torah in that Pasuk, which was Perkyo Tessin to Hillam, I think. The Eidos of Hashem, the testimony of Hashem is trustworthy. Uh, it it, it uh, makes uh, not so smart people smarter. So the Torah is called Eidos, but for whatever reason, so some so the, the, the reason that doesn't make sense is according to that logic, someone who couldn't give Eidos shouldn't be allowed to get an Aliyah, which we know isn't true. Well, except for this one thing. So who's that, that? Who's definitely not allowed to give Eidos? A, an Evan. So Rashi here explains at the very top of Chafbeis and Beis, if they're saying that it's a problem with his family, would mean that either his father or his mother had been a slave and wasn't properly freed. So if this guy has a, has either a, a father or a mother, even a grandparent, who ends up as a, an Evan Kanani who was never freed, that person has the status of an Evan. They wouldn't be well. Um, well, it's if it's the father, it may not be. It may be machlokus uh, him about that. Why is he? Because he certainly I understand it to be somebody that he's tied into. I understand. Well, basically, you need to be a kosher Jew to to testify. And an evad, we're not talking about an evad ivri. Oh, we're talking about an evad kanani. Oh, that's so. Right. Yeah. So because they're not fully Jewish. Yeah. So so I I missed that it, Rashi explicitly says it. And uh so if you'd be an Eved, then he couldn't be a, a witness and he couldn't be a judge either. 
because there's a Mishnah somewhere later, I think it's Anita, uh, that someone who can't uh, testify can't be uh, a dying. So I, let's just keep reading from the beginning here. So, and if it's an Eredivikam Mishpacha, he always was Pasal, and just because someone testifies it right now doesn't mean, basically, it's not like, there's certain things, I, I discussed with Rabbi Schwartz a long time ago about certain things, and certain things he says, they're they're bound to come out. A certain fact that exists about people's lineage, is, it's going to come out at some point. So, uh, it's not like this person suddenly became this Dayan suddenly became unfit to be a Dayan because these witnesses testified. His status was his status, and we would have found it out sooner or later. Just because it happened right now shouldn't disqualify him for being a Dayan right now in the middle of while he's sitting down uh, as a, on the panel of the Basin to Paskin about this, uh, if this star, if the signatures on this star are really authentic or not. So the Gemara says in the second paragraph on 22A1, the second line of Chavez and Baal, Fiolam Eim Lecha Ered the Gazanusa. No, so the testimony that was was that he stole. The Kaamri Hani Yadi Bei the Avad B'Tshuva. But here we're talking about a case where the these know that he did Tshuva. So there's a huge Machlokis to show him on this point. So Rashi says, I think we I mentioned Rashi last week, that these two Dayanim. that the Dayanim know that he did tshuva. So Rashi says, did tshuva for, that he returned the gzela. Now, I was looking into it. I couldn't find, I have to look deeper. But, you know, you the Rambam says in Hilchos, uh tshuva, just because you return the, the object doesn't mean that you may, you have to, you know, apologize and, and, and uh, appease him for having so, besides for returning it. So... A lot of tshuva is really in the heart. So there's no way of one person knowing what's in someone else's heart. So I guess Rashi, from his perspective, says, we know he did tshuva because they saw him return it and he asked tshuva. So we we asked forgiveness, so we assume, I guess, that he was authentic in asking. But it seems to be a huge machlokis we shown him, and Rashi seems to be pretty uh, unique that it's the two dayanim say, we know that he did tshuva. Most Rishonim argue, based on Arach, and they say, that because these Dayanim are sitting with this Dayan, now they're kind of uh, disqualified from testifying about him. Since they had formed a group of, of Dayanim together, now they have, they're almost like partners to an extent, so they don't have enough credibility to talk about, about him. Because since they sat down with him, he now make, what, what he did now makes them look bad, so they don't have credibility. So many, many Rishonim disagree with Rashi and say that, other witnesses came and said that he did tshuva. So it's a case of two witnesses and two witnesses. Two witnesses came and said, you know, we know that he stole this. And then two witnesses came and said, but after that, we know he returned it. So you need separate witnesses to come and say he did tshuva. Now, normally, if we had two Adam who said, Shmiro killed Beryl, and then two witnesses came, Shmiro didn't kill Beryl. We know Beryl is dead now, but they say Shmiro didn't do it. We have two conflicting witnesses, two pair, sets of conflicting witnesses, and we can't act on either of them. That's what Talacha says. We kind of we we can't uh, trust group one. We can't trust trust group two. Only in the case of Adam Zomimim, where the second group says, "You couldn't have seen Reuven kill Shimon because you were with us far enough away that it was impossible for you to to have seen what was going on at the time that you claim it happened." Then the Torah believes the second witnesses. But if two are just giving opposite or different uh, details of a similar event or what they're claiming to be the same event, we discount them both. So, um, but this is a case where they're saying, you know, on Monday he stole something, and some, and then other witnesses came. On Wednesday he gave it back and, and asked forgiveness. So we know he did Jew. Uh The Shach, who is a very important commentary on the side of the Shulchan Aruch, even though most of Shonim disagree with Rashi, he's Paskins like Rashi. Uh, um. And people say the Rambam disagrees with Rashi. Many Rishonim disagree with Rashi. But let me just see the Rambam again. Uh, 
The way the Rambam explains this halacha. Three who are sitting down to verify a, a, a star, a contract or a document. And two witnesses came and complained against one of them that he was that he had stolen money or something like that. And then two other witnesses came and testified that he did that he returned on the path of Chuva. If they hadn't signed yet, they testified that he had returned the last object, then the three Dayanam are able to sign together because they were a group of three. But if after the two of them signed, then the testimony was that he did Chuva, he can't sign with them because it's as if he didn't, he wasn't a Dayan with them at the time that they signed, when the first two signed. And when is this true? When they complained about him for doing an Avera. But if they said that he were, that he had a problem with his family lineage, like he doesn't, uh, like they said that his mother was not a free, was not freed and he's an Evet, or she didn't really convert and he's not Jewish. And then after the two of them signed that, uh, that, they're, that, that what they said wasn't true and really he is a kosher Jew, then he could sign with them because it's only a revelation of something from before. So meaning if they they uh, witnesses came and said that he had stolen now now that based and knows that now he's not allowed to, he's not a kosher aid he's not a kosher dying then you need new dayanim to restore him well when the witnesses came and said his mother was a uh, was a, sla a slave who wasn't freed properly and then someone else said no we we know here's a copy of the of the star we know she was freed so then he could still sign because it's not like he needed to be restored to his stat, meaning when he stole, we needed new Dayanim, new witnesses to tell us that he returned it and did Shuva to restore him to a state of Kashras. But when we had, when it was someone claimed that he, his mother wasn't Jewish or his mother was a slave who was never properly freed, and then it ends up that she was, she was Jewish and there was no problem about it. So then it's, he's not kosher because of the witnesses, you know, coming and saying, we saw that she got freed with a kosher document and stuff like that because it was going to come out. So there are a bunch of other technical differences between the way I explained the Gemara with the Rashi and with the way the Rambam explains it. But there is a, a big, but the main thing that, that uh, Nosa Kalim mentioned about the Rambam is that according to Rashi, the other Dayanam are the ones who say, we know that he did Shuva. And according to just about all the other Rishonim, you need a separate group of witnesses who come and say that the other Dayan returned the thing and did Shuva. And and it's a little bit surprising, but the Shach Paskins like Rashi, even though he seems to be and the other posts say he that Rashi is a minority opinion. No one else says like him, but the Shach Paskins like Rashi. Amrib Zera. No, I'll tell you later. Amrib Zera. Hani Milsa mi Rabbi Ami Shmeli. I heard this from Rav Abba. Vilav Rav Abba de Minako Shachta. And if not for Rav Abba of Ako, who's a different Rav Abba, I would have forgotten it. If three people sat down as Dayanim to, to, to verify a, a, a contract, and one of them died. We had sat down as three, but one is not here. And from that unusual text, people will realize that there was a base then, but one of them died, and that's why there's only two signatures on there. Rabbi Nachman Yitzchak says, if the text that they used was this star, this contract came in front of us, the based in, you don't need to write anything more because the fact that they that you wrote it Kadmana Beidina, it came in front of a base, and we know that it was three. So you don't have to write explicitly there's three Dayanim if you use the term based in. So then the Gemara says Vedoma based in Chatzafu, but maybe it's a Chutzpedik based in. And like Shmuel, the Amr Shmuel, Shnaim Shedanu Dinaim, Dina El Shanik Rabbeis and Chatzuf. That two Dayanim, so you're supposed to have three Dayanim because it's an odd number. And in case there's a conflict, the you take a vote and there's going to be a clear majority. But Shmuel says if two judged, their judgment is is valid, but they're considered a chutzpah de court for having judged with only two people. So if if so, this is saying it, you if you would lose, use a term in front of three, that's not a problem. But if you say it's a based in and you see two signatures, you might say maybe it's a chutzpahdik based in that has only two dianim. So the Gemara says, "Dixi be'dina drabana ashi." 
because it says it came into the basin of Rabbi Ashi, and everyone knows that Rav Ashi, our master Rav Ashi, would not be a chutzpah court. The Dilma Rabbana Deve Rav Ashi to Shmos Viralu, but maybe Rav Ashi himself held like Shmuel that two judges are allowed to judge. Ashi, and so meaning that part of the text was we were we said that this was received by the basin Ravashi and Ravashi instructed us blank. So if you would, uh, so since it has Ravashi in there, we're worried we're 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 we we know for sure that there must have been three day on him there. Okay, Mishnah. Aisha Shaamra Aisha's Isha Yisi Grushani Namanis. If a woman comes and says, I was married, but now I'm divorced, we believe her because the mouth that makes her asser to marry by saying, meaning if she would have come and not said anything, and we'd say, are you single? And she says, yes, we would assume that she's single, having never been married before. And therefore, she could marry a Kohen. But the fact that she comes and says, I was married, but I'm divorced now, she's uh. with she's she's withholding herself from being allowed to marry a Kohen. So... Since she's boss. maybe Erwin, do you have a question? Uh, no, Chaf Bays Amid Aleph. I'm trying to follow. You're on Chaf Bays. Chaf Bays Amid Aleph. The Mishnah yeah. is about twelve lines from the top. Ha'isha Shamra. Okay. Yeah, I'm following you. Okay. Ha'isha Shamra. Ha'isha Sisha Yisi Grushani Nemanes Rapesha Osur Rapesha Hiter. Uh, because the mouth that made her forbidden to people is also the one that makes her mutter. Mm -hmm. um, but if there are witnesses that she had been married and they don't know that she's divorced, the only way we know she's divorced is because she's saying she's divorced, then we don't believe her. If she said I was captive. Now in those days, if non-Jews would kidnap you or 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 take you captive, let's say, uh, if you they were traveling and they captured the caravan, these bandits were worried that uh well, there's two possibilities. Either that they would rape her, a woman, or possibly that the woman would allow them to not to, to have relations with her because uh it might she might think that it'll help her escape if she acts friendly to them she might be able to escape so if it's a case of rape she'd be allowed to stay married to her to her husband but if he's a coin she wouldn't be allowed to to stay married to her husband uh because that's Allah of of uh zo isha zone of kahu but if she uh voluntarily then even if her husband wasn't a Kohen, she would she wouldn't be allowed because that's like what we learned back on Daf Gimel by uh, we mentioned a little bit about the case of Esther uh, and Achashverosh if she was really married to Mordechai, which many Rishonim learned. So if she said I was captive, so the only way we know that she had been held captive, but she uh, had no uh, sexual relations with the non-Jew, she's believed because Shapesha or Apesha Hitur, the mouth that uh, forbids her is the one that could allow her. But if there are test, uh, witnesses that she had been held captive, the he omers tahorani, and she says, but you know they didn't touch me. I'm ain't uh, and she's not believed. But if she got married, and then witnesses testify, uh, testified, she does not have to get divorced. Meaning, what's this case? So the, we'll have to wait for the Gemara to tell us what this case is talking about. So, so it so that's the chiddush of hapesha asu hapesha hitter is saying she doesn't even have to give the get because that's the pesha asu hapesha hitter gives her this enough credibility that we believe her. Now nowadays, if someone would say that, no rabbi would would let her get married unless she brings. Uh, Unless she can bring a document from a basin certifying that she had been divorced. I mean, and then it kind of goes into the category of, uh, oh, no, never mind.
But also nowadays it's much easier because of telephones and and other things. It's easy to find out from other communities, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, what what happened. Okay, so. One possibility, and not not everyone agrees with this, is so which which is the part of a pesha also a pesha hitir? In the first case of the Mishnah, meaning what was she forbidding? Is it, is it because she had said that she was married, and now she's saying that she'd been divorced? The fact that she said she was married, she was limiting herself. Is that the pesha asr, or is it the fact that she is limiting herself to not being allowed to marry a kohen? So the fact that she's saying I'm divorced. Because she's excluding Kohanim from from her uh, eventual possible pool of spouses, that gives her enough credibility that to say um, for us to believe her. Meaning, so that logic would would hold, and I think this is like what Tosos holds that Pesha uh, also Pesha Hitzer works as a form of Megu. You should believe my claim because if I wanted to, I could have made a better claim. Yeah, yeah. So she could have said, "I'm single," which would mean I could marry a Kohen also. That would be a better claim. So from the fact that she's saying, I was married, but I'm divorced now, because she's not making the best possible claim, that by itself gives her some credibility. So that understanding would be, I think, I think that's Tosos's opinion uh, that we discussed at the end of or whatever it was, at the beginning of the parak, that Pesha or Pesha is a is a form of Megu, or it works similar to the way Megu works. So the Gemara says, Am Ravasi, Minayan la Pesha or Pesha Hiter, Minatora. What is the biblical source that Pesha Asur Pesha Hiter Shenemar is beating a satelish as Isha? So this is a case of Moti Shemra. So um so a man married a woman, and then he says she was not a Basula, she wasn't a virgin, and uh the husband goes to Basin and brings one of the uh sheets or cloths that has blood on it from the wedding uh, bed. And he's saying she, he's defaming my daughter, so that's called Motzi Shemra. So he says, "As beating us hati leish hazel leisha, my daughter I gave to this man as a wife leish asar." When he said I gave her to a man, she became forbidden to marry anyone else. But hazel he tira. So this is a little bit interesting. So uh, there's a halacha. I heard this, I don't know if he said the name of the Maral or not, but the Rosh Hashiva, the former Rosh Hashiva, now he's the Nasi of Kirby Avner, Mordecai Greenberg, he said in a Haggadah share, Arami Oved Avi, how did Lavan want to destroy, uh, destroy uh, Yaakov? So he quoted someone who may have been the Maral, but it may, maybe wasn't, said it wasn't Lavan with the time of Yaakov. It was Lavan when he was younger, when the time of when Eliezer came to marry Rivka. Eliezer was the shliach of Avraham to find a wife for Yitzchak. Now, if Eliezer wouldn't have returned, we wouldn't have known. Maybe Eliezer uh, was Makadesh, someone uh, gave gave the ring and the gifts to betroth someone for for Yitzchak. Maybe not, but we don't know because he's dead and we we, we don't know. So in a case like that, the halacha is that uh, the person that Yitzchak wouldn't have been allowed to marry anyone. Because we're worried that any person that he would have married, maybe Eliezer had given the Kedushin to her sister. Or a close relative of hers that would uh, uh, that would be precluded from being able to be Mekadesh. Maybe it was a, he, Eliezer gave it. So, I mean, there are, uh, I have seen it, it's been, it's been a long time, but saying, well, maybe if, you know, if someone is an only daughter of an only daughter, of, a, of an only child, of an only child, so it's not possible. So it is possible, but we're uh, so if so. This is according to the medrash that uh, Rashi mentions that uh, Rashi uh, was wondering how come uh, when when Eliezer was there first he was talking to Besuel and then he was only talking to Lavan. So he mentions the medrash that Besuel tried to poison Eliezer and the Malach spun the table and then Besuel got poisoned. So there was no more Besuel anymore. But uh, Rabbi Greenberg 
mentioned uh, an opinion that Lovin was the one trying to kill Eliezer. And so if, if he would have been successful in marrying Eliezer, Yitzhak wouldn't have been allowed to marry anyone. So Klai Yisrael would have ended right there. So this uh, so this Gemara is, is using that same principle of that vort. That when when the father said, it's between Asati Laish, I had married off my daughter. Because a katana, the, a, a minor daughter, the husband's the father's allowed to marry her off. So he says, I married her off to a man. So now she's not allowed to get to marry to marry anyone else, to, to marry anyone in the world, because maybe uh he married her to this guy's brother. So this person wouldn't be allowed to marry her because she's already had received kedushin from from his brother. So then when he said Laish Hazah, he added the word that this man. Now we know who he had married her off to, and now she's permitted to stay married. So that's what the Gemara says. It's a very strange raya. So the Gemara says, Lama li kra, svarahu, hu asrava, hu Why do you need a pasuk? It's just a basic svara. He can prohibit her, and he can make her, and he can make her mutter. Meaning, because in that case, he is the baldavar. Meaning it's not... Uh, He's the one, she's not allowed to, she's a minor. She can't accept Kedushin from, from anyone. So since he's the one in charge of receiving Kedushin, he could tell her if he accepted Kedushin on her behalf to someone. So there, that's not, but a Pesha Asr, a Pesha Hitar is someone where you're not the, in charge, but we believe you anyway. She's not in charge of being divorced. It depends if the husband gave her a get or not. So it's not at all similar to, to the principle of a Pesha Shas or a Pesha Hiter. So Eliki Itzrich Kra Lakhuna Amarav. We needed this Pasuk not to tell us a Pesha or Pesha Hiter, but it's to teach us the, the halacha that Rafuna Amarav taught, the Amrav Huna Amarav, Minain La of Shanem and Lesser is Bitumina Torah. How do we know that a father is believed to forbid his daughter to someone and say, no, she's not allowed to marry him because a few years ago when she was still you know, when she was uh, when she was still a katana. Now she's not a katana anymore. But when she was a katana, I made a deal I, uh, with with so and so to to marry to to be to be married so, to marry someone. Now there are, there are certain cases. There's uh, there's a Yerushalmi. It's not in the Babli, but when um, when Tamar had the twins, so the first one stuck his hand out, and they put a red thread over it to know which one was the Bechor. But then he, the, that one stuck his hand back in, and the other, the twin brother came out first, the one who didn't have the red string on his on his hand. So there's halacha, I think, at the end of Kedushin, that says that, so this has halachic ramification, which one was born first, because Yerusha, who would be the Bechor? I mean, obviously, this was before Matan Torah, but after Matan Torah, we would be very important to know who was the Bechor, and we would need to know definitively. So the halacha is a midwife, Ha, is believed, even though midwife normally isn't a kosher aide, she's a woman. But since she's in the one who's 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 uh, who's in charge of the uh, of the of of the birthing process over there, she has the halacha recognizes her as as a credible person to tell us right away who um, which which boy was born first in a case like this for twins. So, so that's a case similar to this, where I mean, uh, it, it's a. It, uh, so I mean, it's not relevant to this gemara, but it's a case where uh, where. Uh, so the Yushami learns it specifically. Um, from when Tamar had the twins, uh, that you that you could rely on on the, uh, on the midwife. So the Gemara says, "Hazel la malid." So how come she, the, the father had to say, "I gave her to this man"? So mi boile la chedetani deve Rabbi Yona. We need this for the statement of Rabbi Yona. Detani Rabbi Yona. Rabbi Yona taught as bitim zat elish hazel has hazel v'loli yava. I gave her to this one and not to to a yava. So meaning, let's say that he. Gave that he married his daughter off to to Yisachar, but Yisachar died, and let's say before the marriage was consummated, and now she has to do yibum with Zvulun, with Yisachar's brother Zvulun. 
So if Zavulin was the one who uh, who was consummating the marriage because Yisachar died before he was able to, and Zavulin is claiming she wasn't a virgin, uh, Rav Yona taught the father could only defend his daughter and say that she really was a basula if he mar- if the husband who was making this claim was the one to whom the father married her off. But if that man had died and now his brother was marrying her and consummating the marriage and he was claiming that she wasn't a basula, the we the father doesn't have the credibility to uh uh when to bring the 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 uh the fabric with the blood on it to say that she is a basula. So Leish Hazeh, it's only uh, if the, the so Tana Rabbanan. So it seems that we don't have at least the, the Gemara at this stage does not have any source from a pasuk about uh, Peshas or Peshit. We learned in the If a woman said, I am married, they say, Oh, nice to meet you. What's your what's your situation? She said, I'm married. And then a little bit later, she tells us that she's single and never married before she's believed. So but how can we believe her? She considered herself something that was us. She told us that she's married, so she wouldn't be allowed to marry anyone. So how can we believe her when she changes something? When she changes, so uh, Amrav Barav Huna Kigon Shenasna Amsla Vareha, because she gave a good excuse. So an Amsla is a good excuse. So what it means is, you know, uh, she came to a place, and uh, Chaim Pipik was trying to uh, to go on a date with her, and in order to get Chaim Pipik off of her back. She said, you know, I'm married. You can't, you know, I can't go on a date with you. And then she met a few other people and she, and uh, and they had heard that she was married. And she says, no, I'm not really married. But Chaim Pippik is such a, a is such a, a, a lachen cop. I gave it as an excuse to, so I wouldn't have to go out with him on a date. But really, I, I am. And they said, that's a good excuse. So that's an amsala. It's a very, it's a reasonable excuse for having told the, the white lie that she was married when she really wasn't. We learned to Bryce like this. If she said, I am married, and then she said, I'm single, she's not believed. But she gives a reasonable and plausible excuse for why she first said she was married, even though she wasn't, then she's believed. There's also, it's very interesting. Gemara is probably trying to hint who she was, but I don't know who it was. It was a, a great woman. Who was also a great beauty, the cups were lebede adam lekacha, and people were were literally jumping over each other to try to uh, to uh, to marry her. The Amr lehem kudeshasani, and she said, "No, nah, you, I already took took uh, accepted uh, an offer of uh, an offer of uh, of a matrimony. I'm not available." Liyamim amda bekitches asma. Then a few days later, we saw her accept the ring from someone else. Even though she had said that she's already an Asian ish. So Amr al Chacham and the Chacham said, Maris Lasos came, why did you do this? You, you you told us that you're that you're married and now this. So Amr Lahem, but Khila Shabai Laya Nasham Shana Mugana. So originally she said, people that were not appropriate for me uh were were trying to to marry me. So I told them I'm Kudesh to get them off my back. But after Shabal, I'm on Nashim Ugana. But now that a, a, a fitting match has uh, has uh, has uh, been pre- precipitated, that's not the wrong word here, but the, the proper match has now been shown to me. So now I, I will accept that. And the Chachamim. And the Chachamim uh, agreed with her. That was a good excuse. And this halacha was brought by Rav Acha, the, the master of the palace, in front of the Chachamim in Usha. So Usha was where one of the... Uh, the Sanhedrin was in Usha for a while. 
But Amr and they said, If she gives a reasonable and plausible excuse, we do believe her. Let's say a husband was talking to his wife and she said, I'm Anita. And then a little bit later, the next day, she says, uh, I'm not Anita. Mahu, what's the din? Do we have to assume she's Anita? We have to wait to know that she went to the mikvah to become Anita? Or uh, is she believed? And it's similar to a case that for which there was some reason that she had to, to say that she was Anita, even though she wasn't Anita. So Amar Lay. So he answered, If she gave a reasonable and plausible reason why she said that she was, uh, why she said she was Anita when she wasn't, we do believe her. And therefore, when she says later that I'm, I'm, I'm Tahor, I'm pure, I'm not Anita, we believe her. Hanamine Arbim Zimnin, Shmuel learned, repeated this 40 times to himself because he felt it was such a wonderful halacha. Uh, except when it happened to, to, to Shmuel himself, his wife had said, Tmeani, and then she said, Horani, and she gave an, an Amsala, he did not rely on her excuse. And, uh, and, uh, he required her to go to the mikvah uh, in the proper time or whatever that uh, because he did not he did not uh, do it for himself. But it seemed that he held it was Allah, the fact that he reviewed it 40 times. We learned in Ebrisa, because now, now we're on Chafez Amit Beza in the third line. Shnaim Omrim Meis. If two men said that a person, if two people said that a certain person died, now if he died, that means his wife is allowed to remarry. But two people said he did not die. Or a case of if two people said this woman was divorced, and two people said, two other witnesses came and said this woman is not divorced. She's not allowed to get remarried because we don't have enough convincing evidence uh, or testimony, I should say, that she's single. Maybe her husband is still alive, or she, her, she's still married to her husband. Now, one of the cases here, if she's divorced or not divorced, uh, how could he have a machlokas if she's divorced or not divorced? So sometimes there's a case where he threw the get at her, and we're not sure. Let's say they were they were ten feet away, and we're not sure if he threw it four 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 feet, eleven inches away from her or five feet, one inch away from her, because it would have to be closer to her in order for it to be a get. So that might be more of a case of Suffolk Mikudeshes as opposed to this. Some are saying convincingly she is and something convincingly, but if, if it convincingly wasn't closer to, to, to her, you know, she's far the way and he throws it here right in front of himself, it wouldn't be, but you know, something, maybe some uh, shenanigans are going on over there. So there's a malfocus if uh, between these people who are, you know, seeing the situation there, if she was really divorced or not. Uh, she's not allowed to get married. But if she remarried someone else, we don't make her get divorced. Rabbi Nachman Bar Yossi, Amar Teitze. But Rabbi Nachman Bar Yossi says she has to get divorced. Amar Rabbi Nachman Bar Yossi, and the, he gave a reason. Where where do I say she has to get married? That's when the witnesses came, and uh, meaning first witnesses came, her husband died. So then she got married, and then more witnesses came and said he didn't die. So since she already got married, when the only witnesses who had came would have allowed her to get married, we let her stay married. Uh, that's where... When do I say she has to divorce her husband? When the second group of Adam, who said that her husband didn't die, and then she got married. In that case, that's when I say she has to leave, uh, leave her second husband. But if she remarried, and then a second group of witnesses came and said, no, her husband's still alive, then lo I agree with the, with the first ruling that she doesn't have to leave her husband, because at the time she got married, she acted properly. There were kosher witnesses that based in took to testimony from and said that her husband had died, so they allowed her to get married. So in that case, when witnesses later come, we don't make her get divorced from the second from the new husband. Mihti Treu Chenin. 
However, this should be a case where we have conflicting witnesses. And when we have two conflicting witnesses, we have to discount what both of them say. So now we don't even know that the first, we, we don't even believe the first witnesses that said her husband, uh, that her husband ever died. And so because uh, uh, an act of, um, of adultery like this with a married woman would, is, a, a, is a sin of kares, if you did an act of kares unintentionally, you give a chatas. Korban. But if it's a suffix, if you did it or not, you have to bring an, a korban asham, which is a, a more serious and expensive korban. So in this case, it's a suffix diraisa. Uh, for a, uh, it's a suffix for a kares. How would we let her stay married? So I'm Rav Sheshes. go to Nisais la'echad me'ideha. It's a case where she married one of the uh, one of the original witnesses who had said that her husband had died. So Rashi says that this Asham Taloi is only uh, is is only obligatory to someone who's in his heart he really has a suffix. He doesn't know if he did an Aveir or not. But because this guy testified, he was that sure that he saw, you know, uh, uh, you know, Yosef Ben Yaakov die, that he testified to it. So he has no doubt that it's allowed. So in that case, that he he we wouldn't make her make uh, her leave him. But he goof about Ashram Talikaima. Okay, so that's true. That would it, that would say that it's not an Aveira for him. But from her perspective, if she's not sure if she's if she's uh really a widow or not, how could she be married? She has a Khi of Kares too. So the Gemara says, but Baumer is Barili. So she says, I really believe in my heart that he's dead, based on what, what this guy said. So there's it's a there's a simon simon yadzayan in Shulchan Aruch, which is the about uh we call it now the Aguna Sugya, but it's about knowing if a husband is dead or alive and she could get remarried. Uh, it's uh, in the Otsra Poskim, which was started around the 1930s or something, with Herzog, who would later become, the, well, maybe he was ready to chief rabbi when they, of, of Israel, of, but would later become Israel when, when they started the project. They wanted to get, you know, because the, the there were many responsive written uh, I let deal with these questions. So they wanted, he wanted to compile uh, in, in uh, a Shulchan Aruch that had all these uh, situations and sakim from different rabbanim after the time when the Shulchan Aruch was printed with the commentaries on the side. So that's called Ultra Poskin, the, the treasury of the Poskin. So that one simon is a whole thick volume in the Ultra Poskin uh, Shulchan Aruch. And it was it was very important after the Holocaust to, to know if if uh, if this one's wife died and if this one's husband died, who could get remarried? And we've seen, I haven't seen a while, but we have uh, uh, copies of Ksuvos, you know, pre-printed Ksuvos in Bergen Belsen because it became a DP camp, so people were getting uh, remarried or married there. We know that we that. Uh, we have ksuvos you know, that were printed there and stuff. But you know, for depending on if the person was married beforehand, they had to know that their that their spouse was dead before they would remarry. And even if it was the husband wanting to know if his wife was dead, on a on a on a Torah level, he could be married to more than one wife. But on a Bhakram Rabbeinu Gershom, uh he's not allowed to. So it had to know that her that his wife was dead before he could remarry also. So one of these halachos in that simon, and those are a lot of those gemars are in the last two prakim of, of Yavamos. So she says that she's certain also, so therefore she wouldn't, um, uh, so she, so she's sure that he's dead, so it's not a, it's not a doubt to her. She says, I'm sure that if he would have been alive, he would have come back. The fact that he's not back by now shows that he's that he's dead. But there is, this is how Rashi explains it, but there is uh Machlokas showing him about that. Um 
Amr of Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan says, Shnaim Amr Meis, Shnaim Amr Mlo Meis. Harezu lo tinase. If two, if two witnesses says that her husband died and two said he didn't die, Harezu lo tinase, she's not allowed to get remarried. But you need say, Slo seite. And if she did, she does not have to leave him. Shnaim Amr Nisgar, Shnaim Amr Lo Nisgar, Shrelo Zit tinase, but you need say, Tate. But in a case of divorce, if two witnesses says that she was divorced and two says she didn't, she wasn't divorced, she's not allowed to get remarried. And if she did get remarried, we force her to uh, to get divorced or we force the husband to divorce her. She's not allowed to stay married. So the Gemara says, Maishna Reisha, Maishna Seifa. What's the difference between a case where they're testifying that she's that her husband died, that she's allowed to stay married, and what's the difference in the case of when uh, when there's a dispute if her first husband divorced her or not, that she's not allowed to stay married. So Amar Abaye Tirgma Beidachad. Abaye said, say that Rabbi Yochanan's statement is talking about when we only have one witness. And, uh, and he meant, and what he meant to say was, or what he said that was recorded incorrectly, what it must have been was Eidachad Omer Meis, because when one uh, witness says that a certain person died, Hemnu Rabbanu Kabeitre, there's a special leniency that the Chachamim believe one witness about the death of a man, like two witnesses, in order that the wife shouldn't be stuck in Aguna her whole life. And the, a real Aguna, not knowing, not what they say nowadays they call people Aguna, uh, which is not a real Aguna case. Most most of the, what they call is not a real Aguna case. One summer we had four people, we knew that where the man was literally an Aguna. The wife refused to come to base there. They, they, they threw the husband out. In some of the cases, they had civil divorces already that they had filed for divorce. And then they said, no, we're, we're, we're happily married. I don't need to get. I mean, the same way that the, uh, so, so, so the same way that, that uh, people like that, they say, oh, she wants to get her husband not giving her. They call her good. So I, we, I, we know all the statistics were, were when there was a in France about 12 years ago, they, they released their, uh, these statistics, and there were more women who refused to show up to Basin to receive a get than there were men who refused to come to Basin to give a get. And then, uh, like four years ago, Rabbi Lau, the current chief rabbi, he also said the same thing, and people got mad at him. But whenever you count the statistics, the statistics always happen to 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 go the way the opposite of what people think in this in this matter. So, in order to save a real aguna. Who we don't know what her, if her husband's alive or dead or this or that. The Chachamim believe, uh, believe one witness. So, Ula, and according to Ula, the Amar Ula, Torah, When the Torah believed one witness, it's as if there's two witnesses here. Behind the Kamar Lomais, Havile Chad, Behind the Varv Shalchad, Bamakum Shnaim. So, what Rabbi Yochanan must have meant is that one aide said that her husband is dead, and the Torah believes one witness. In that case, so she wouldn't be in a gonna. So Rashi says, because in the case of Sota, one witness is enough to make her undergo the Sota pro uh, process. So it shows that there are times when one witness is allowed to actually terminate the marriage, in, in this case. So it's not just a cool of the Chachamim that uh, in the case of Aguna, we, we believe one witness. Uh, and so there is one witness that, that he died, and so therefore we believe him. And one witness says that he didn't die. But, but this would be a case, but according with Ula's din, the, one, the first witness who said that her husband died, he has the status of two witnesses. So, of course, one witness who's going to come later and say, no, he didn't die, wouldn't be believed against that one witness. So, so then, uh, so in that case, she'd be allowed to remarry and she would be allowed to stay married. There's no suffolk at all. So why would Rabbi Yochanan have to teach it? It's so obvious that she would be allowed to stay married to the second husband. So the Gemara says, "Mishum de Rav Asi," because of a statement of Asi. The Rav Asi ikshus pel uzus v'saim harchik hasir mimcha ikshus pel uzus v'saim harchik mimcha. A pasuk in Mishle, remove from yourself a uh, stuttering uh, uh, of the mouth and uh, and uh, perversity of the lips. 
be very far, far from. So since people might think that the uh, that this isn't that that uh, this wasn't done kedasugidin, according to the strict halacha, there's no problem with it. But because people are going to say, oh, they only allowed her to get married with one witness, even though there was one witness against it, they didn't know the halachic technical technical details of why we believe the first one, we don't believe the second one. So you might think because of that, in order that people shouldn't talk which is what this Pusk and Mishle is uh, seems to be talking about, we might think that she we would make her get divorced. And uh, so Rabbi Yochanan says, no, we, we don't make her get divorced because of that reason. Seifa, and then the part of Rabbi Yochanan that if in the case of divorce, we would force, where two witnesses said he divor- his, his, her husband divorced her, and two witnesses said her husband didn't, didn't divorce her, we force that her to leave her second marriage because we're concerned that maybe she's still married to the first husband. Why? That's a case of Eidach and Omer Nisgarsh, of Eidach and Omer Nisgarsh. That's a case where one witness says that she was divorced and one witness says she was not divorced. Now, both sets of witnesses are talking about a married woman. Everyone agrees that she had been married. And the one witness, the first witness who's saying she was divorced, his words don't stand up to the fact that two witnesses previously said we saw her get married, so they can uh, that one witness can undo the kedushin, which was done through two witnesses. I mean, that's that seems to be what what the Gemara means over here. Oh, Rashi says no. Rashi says he's saying she was married, but her husband divorced her. The second one is saying she was married and her husband didn't divorce her. Now we have two witnesses, two independent witnesses saying she was married. So then the second witness. Who uh, uh, the first witness who says he was she was married but got divorced? His one one test one uh, one person is not enough to cancel out the two t- witnesses who are testifying in front of us this week that uh, she was married. Okay, so that's how Rav uh, how Abaye explained Rabbi Yochanan's statement that even though uh, 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 Rabbi Yochanan said there's two witnesses and two witnesses really he means one witness and there's a reason why he's believed why the one witness is believed in a case of that a husband died and the reason why the one witness isn't believed when the divorce ha- about the divorce because there ends up being two single witnesses who say she's married so that becomes one group of Adam that she was married rava ama rava gives a different reason again rabbi yochanan said if if two witnesses said that her husband died and two witnesses says she didn't die she could remain married but if two witnesses says that her husband divorced her and two witnesses says that she didn't divorce her, she's we we she's not allowed to remain married. What's the difference between the case of widow or case of divorce? So that uh, Baye's answer was first. Now Rav's answer. We all am trio trained in who it literally is two witnesses. Rabbi Yochanan paskin like Rabbi Nachman Bar Yosi in the case of divorce, but he didn't paskin like him in the case of death. My time of Misa Nicholamachashta. A Nicholamachashta. Because if he would come back, uh, she's not able to uh, confront him coming back with any uh, with any evidence. Gerish in Nicholamachashta. But if uh, in the case of divorce and he comes back and claims he didn't, she can. Uh, um, she can uh, uh, face him and and respond. Meaning, Rabbi, Rabbi Nachman Bar Yossi said that uh, if she if she got married, we 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 make her get divorced. So he said, in the case of death, well, uh, excuse me, if Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Nachman Bar Yossi said that if they if she got married after the 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 two pairs of witnesses testify, then we force her to leave. But if it was only after, if she got married by Hector, because it was only one set of witnesses, we let them stay. So if if he comes back and said, if he would come back later and say, I'm here, she can't say, uh, I thought you were dead. You know, that, that doesn't work. If he comes back and says, I didn't divorce you, she could come and say, here's my get. Or she could bring witnesses who said, we saw you give a get to her. So that's something which, uh, which uh, there could be, if you come back, there would be a confrontation and and she could possibly bring evidence that to dispute his claim. But in the case of Misa, there's nothing, uh, 
there's nothing uh, she can do to uh, to contest his claim. But would she be so chutzpedic to claim that she was divorced if she really wasn't? says, If a woman says to her husband, you divorced me, now she's believed. There's a chazaka that a person, that a woman isn't going to be so chutzpedic in front of her husband. So the reason that she's saying you divorced me is because she's because it's true. Now that he's not his uh, her, uh, her husband, she would be that chutzpedic. Now there is a similar chazaka in regard to uh, someone denying having b- borrowed money from the creditor right to his face. If you borrowed money from him, you wouldn't be that chutzpedic to say, I didn't borrow one red cent from you. So there's a similar chazaka about that, or maybe it's not so similar, but it, it seems to have similar logic. So the Gemara says, Hani mili hecha deleka edim de kamasayala. That's only true that you wouldn't be that uh, that uh, that that you wouldn't uh, deny that she wouldn't say you divorced me. That's if there's no, if there's no witnesses who would uh, who would who would support her claim. But if there are witnesses that would back her claim, she would be chutzpedik uh, and uh, and and say. But these would be cases where they're not real witnesses, but it's where she hired some people to back her up. So, uh, so uh, she would be chutzpah. Rav Asi, Amar Rav Asi explains the, the the difference in Rabbi Yochanan's opinion. How come he distinguishes between a case where they say her husband died versus her husband divorced her? Going to Amri Adim Achshav Meis Achshav Gersha. That's when the mm-hmm. first witnesses came and said he just divorced her or he had just died. Misa Lake of Rure. In the case of a death, we don't know exactly when it occurred, when it when it happened. Gerish and Ikal of Rure. But in a case, we know when a divorce happened. Amrin and La, because we could tell her, Im Isa, Dahachi Hava, Echzilan Gitech. If it really happened, show us your get. So therefore, if she doesn't, we say that's because it really didn't happen. And therefore, you're really not, you're really not divorced. And therefore, you have to. Uh, you, you're not allowed to stay married to your new husband. But in a case of death, because let's say the witnesses came, we just came from sea and he had fallen overboard in a big storm. You know, there's uh, there's there's not going to be any possible uh, contradiction to that evidence. Meaning it's possible that a, a year later he might appear, but uh, it's not uh, cl- clear. If she's claiming... Uh, if they say the divorce just happened, you still have the you must still have your your document on you, Mrs. Uh, so and so. So show it to us. Okay, we'll leave it here. It's six twenty. We didn't cover so much, but these are very. We have to you know understand each step of the gemaras here. So we're uh, three lines from the bottom of Chav Beis Ahmed Beis.